AEDT 1170U, Psychological Foundations and Digital Technologies, Module 8, Video 8.3, Gender and Technology. Here are the guiding questions for this video. What does the research show us about men's and women's attitudes to technology? Based on what you know about male versus female brain development, do you think men or women are drawn to different types of technology? And what are some of the areas that are needed for future research in this developing area? We know from learning theory that our attitude to learning, our emotional or affective response to learning, will affect how successful we are. We also know that motivation, feedback, cognitive style, and memories affect our approach to learning. In addition, your personality and the traits you exhibit as relatively stable constructs in adulthood might make you drawn to certain types of learning experiences. So let's look specifically at how gender affects our approach to technology. This is a new area of research and many questions remain to be looked at. However, based on what we now know about gender identity, brain research and learning styles, let's take a look at some of the recent work related to attitudes to technology. Ray Sormingen and Harris discovered that men are more interested in mastering computer commands and want computers with voice recognition, whereas women want to be able to use the machines to perform functions. Men want to command the machines. Reflect on this. How has your attitude to new technology affected your learning, either positively or negatively? Do you identify with the same gender roles as we just stated? These researchers asked three primary questions. Do men and women differ in their perceptions about the value of technology in making users more productive? Do men and women differ in attitudes to the impact of technology on people and work environments? And do men and women differ in their relative comfort using computers? Most literature shows that there are gender differences in attitudes towards computer use in various environments. Over the years, there has been some gender stereotyping of various academic specialties. We know that adolescent girls tend to prefer software applications, where boys tend to prefer programming applications. Some researchers argue that females opted out of the computer field for a variety of reasons, perhaps gender inappropriate software, sexual stereotype games, games focused on violent examples, or the lack of strong female protagonists. Ray and other authors found that both men and women found computers raised productivity, but women viewed it more highly as a productivity enhancing tool. Neither men nor women were very concerned about the impact of technology on the work environment, but women showed even less concern than men about this. Ray Al also found that historically, literature shows men were more confident than women. They consequently spent more time working with the technology. However, this study showed that women are now more comfortable with computers than men. Again, they say that women want to be able to use the machine and men want to command the machine. Venkatesh and Morris stated that gender research in psychology provides a solid theoretical ground for the applied research of gender differences in numerous settings. We know that women and men encode and process information using different socially constructed cognitive structures that are in line with their gender identity and in turn directly affect an individual's perceptions. So our gender schemas or how we view the world based on what we have learned is appropriate for our gender shapes our attitudes to technology. When you shop for new tech stuff, who makes the final call? The woman in the family or the man? A new survey came back with some unexpected results. If you're a woman walking into an electronics store, it can be frustrating if the store focuses on the man you're with. One is the salesperson immediately thinks my husband is going to do the actual buying. But typically he really has no ultimate say in what's going to happen. It's, it's me. But and what's true for Alka Gupta? a vice president of business development who simultaneously uses an iPod and laptop is probably true of a lot of couples. When it comes to games... Yeah, they just keep coming. ...and gadgets, Retrievo, a company that tracks consumer trends, says women are more tech-savvy than ever. 
if there's something new out there, she will probably get the picture first. Gadgets are becoming more and more critical, not just to family efficiency, but also your kids need them. So it's almost a question of necessity for the female of the house or the mother to be a little bit more involved in those decisions. So the hand that rocks the iPod and the face staring back from the screen is likely to be a woman's, often showing we men how to do it. So we men are pretty much just blowhards when it comes to the gap. I didn't say that you did, but I'll go ahead and tell my husband that you said that. <laughs> I'll use it as ammunition. And that's how we encourage domestic happiness around here. Just about half the women in the survey said they consider themselves tech savvy, while eight out of ten men thought of themselves that way. But Lisa and Tom, more women than men, knew that MB stands for megabytes. That's right. That's what it stands for. I that's thought it was. Right. I thought it was I've me been boss. telling you this all along. <laughs> MB is me boss. <laughs> <laughs> you just. <can't> <laughs> Research by Hay and Freeman in the Journal of Information Systems indicated that special treatments to relieve anxious feelings toward computers are needed, especially for females. And despite initial computer experience disadvantages, female students with a strong commitment to learning were able to outperform their male counterparts. Any thoughts or comments here? Huang, another researcher, found that an individual's affective or emotional commitment and intrinsic motivation were critical issues in developing successful technology-mediated learning environments. That effective learning requires primarily engagement with others in the online learning community, and that an identification among group members enhances learning. This might suggest that we need to group members according to gender identity. What do you think about that? Huang also stated that sociolinguists have claimed for years that men and women communicate with different underlying social objectives, and their communication patterns are very different. But the effects of gender on knowledge sharing have been largely ignored in information system research, even though gender is a fundamental aspect of communication. So let's think about this. If women learn in connected ways, are they at an advantage in an online environment? If we're living in a patriarchal or male-dominated culture, will men be the drivers of technology, deciding what, how, where, and why we use it? And what would a female-centered online learning environment look like? What would it sound like? Would it be different? I think it's really critical that we get more people worldwide and particularly in the United States into technical fields and more women. We want to have people in the workplace that look like the world and the world isn't just one gender. I think women just bring a very different perspective to technology. The way that they use products, their experiences, the way that it's built, the way that they think about the way other people are going to use the technology. Uh, people who aren't necessarily a part of the process, you know, that's a, a loss for not just um, the rest of us who don't get that perspective, but also for them who don't get to shape the future that is going to come to exist. The problems of the future, these are human problems, they're not men problems, and we're going to need women to help solve those problems, and we need them um, to start now. It was an introduction to programming class, and I walked into the class wearing a cheerleading uniform, and the teacher just cracked up. He thought it was the funniest thing to see a cheerleader in a programming class. That day, he also passed back the first test from that term. And he announced that the person with the highest grade in that class, with 100%, was me, the cheerleader. I kind of broke down the stereotype for him at that moment, where the idea that girls can't program, that cheerleaders are stupid, that women shouldn't be in technology, it just takes a moment like that to really change someone's mindset about where women belong in technology. We've learned over time that you can't build great products if you don't have a team that empathizes with and understands the audience that the product is for. And with the internet, our audience is literally the planet now. As we grow to larger and larger audiences, you know, the different perspectives everyone brings to the table become increasingly valuable to be part of the discussion when you're shaping what that product is going to look like. It's a product that's really about connecting and being social and um, engaging with your friends and family. So I think it's like a very important product for women to be involved with making. The one piece of advice I would give a woman in technology is stick with it. It is worth it to get to the end. It's very easy to look around you and 
feel intimidated because you don't know anything about the subject and there are a lot of people who look like you, but the most important thing is to believe in yourself and to just not be afraid to do something that uh, you have no idea how to do. There is nothing you can't do if you believe you can do it. You know, it's easy to sit back and say, oh, the stereotype is that women aren't good at engineering. They're not good at math and science. And to let yourself fall victim of that, but let that encourage you. Let that push you forward and drive you to, you know, fight the stereotype, break the stereotype. What are the future directions in studies of gender and technology? Sanders suggests that here are some future areas of research. First, the potential influence of parents on daughters' technology interests and behaviors usually varies by socioeconomic status and education level, but does it also vary by race and ethnicity? Next, does computer game playing in childhood lead to greater technology competence as adults? Is stereotype threat a factor in females' computer technology behavior and performance? What's the relationship between role models and females' academic achievement and persistence in technology? And what is the relationship between support groups and females' academic achievement and persistence in technology? What do we know about the relationship between single-sex education, or single-sex groupings, and females' academic achievement and persistence with technology? What approaches to staff development are most effective in learning new technology and females' academic achievement and their persistence with it? And what's the relationship between collaborative learning and females' achievement and persistence in learning new technologies? The synthesis questions for this video are as follows. Reflect on two or three major insights that you've gained from this video and be prepared to share your thoughts in tutorial this week. You might have to examine some of the online stereotypes that you have about how men and women learn, how men and women think, and the things that you grew up with. What supports or barriers do you see to support equal access to technology for both genders? And do you think technology is a driving force in shaping our human gender identity?